The map of RuneScape is divided into chunks. As a one chunk man, I'll have to complete all tasks in a chunk before moving on to the next. And I'll be starting right here in Yanil. Yanil, or Yanil, uh, Yanil, however you say it. This is one of those obscure locations in RuneScape that's been around for forever, but isn't really relevant for much. It just radiates old and janky. And if you know anything about me, you know that old and janky are my numerous middle names. So that's why I decided to make this guy, Chunk Yanil. If you're unfamiliar with the idea of a chunk locked account, or you just need a refresher, it's a game mode invented by Alex Bailey, the original chunker, where you unlock game chunks by completing all tasks in each area before you move to the next. Once all content is completed in the chunk, the next chunk is randomly rolled. There's another game mode, Extreme One Chunk Iron Man, that was invented by Limpwort, which increases the difficulty of the game mode even more. I'll be doing a twist on Limpwort's rules, hence the semi-extreme name. The rules of the account are, I must complete the highest skilling challenges, complete quests and diaries as far as possible, obtain all unique monster drops, obtain all unique items, and complete all minigames. These are Limpwort's rules, but I'm making a few exceptions. First of all, I'm starting with two chunks instead of one. This is mostly just because I want to explore all of Yanil and the whole city fits nicely in two chunks. So call me a two chunk man, I guess. Two. Chunk tasks must be chunk specific. This means random events, overworld implings, and clue scroll drops, and anything else I acquire from outside my chunks don't count toward chunk goals. Three, I only need to complete the highest level skilling challenges if I have a primary training method. If you don't know, primary training methods are consistent and repeatable and require items from a primary source. Primary sources are things with guaranteed output like trees, mining rocks, pickpocketing, and shops. And lastly, I'm not going for skill capes. Sorry. These are my rules. And really, if I did, this starting chunk would take years, probably, because the magic skill cape is in the wizard skill. So, why you nil? Well, first of all, I'm not done talking about how old it is. This place must be one of the cities that has received the fewest updates in all of OSRS. The latest update was over four years ago when they... made the hills smoother? Like, these soldiers look like nobody told them it's not RuneScape Classic anymore. Lots of odd, empty houses and weird bits of scenery that seem to be thrown about really randomly. To me, it's full of whimsy and has that truly ancient RuneScape vibe that makes me feel like a kid again. It also presents some fun and varied challenges. Let's start off by looking at the skilling challenges in Yanil. My main overarching goal for the chunk will be getting the level 66 magic needed to enter the Wizard's Guild. On top of that, I'll need 65 thieving to pickpocket a watchman, 58 cooking is required to cook a pita bread, 50 range is required to wield the hunter's crossbow, 28 farming to plant a wild blood seed, 27 fletching to fletch an oak shield, 15 woodcutting to chop an oak tree, and 15 smithing to smith an iron bar. I don't have a primary method of obtaining an iron bar, only from superheating ore drops, which is why I don't need to do the highest skilling challenge of 33 smithing. There's still more though, because Yanil has one of the hallmarks of a great starting chunk. A dungeon. The Yanil Agility Dungeon. I will be lamping my agility to gain access to the areas within. Now, this place basically has a requirement of 40 agility to even start training here, but I have some tricks to help make the lamping goal more realistic. However, this does add another skilling challenge. 67 agility to access the highest level agility obstacle in the dungeon. We're not even done yet though. We have to complete all doable diary tasks. That means we'll need 82 thieving to attempt to pick the lock in the agility dungeon as I can obtain a lockpick in there. Entering the magic guild is also a diary task. There's also an easy task to browse the hunter store. And I'll have to start hand in the sand, though I can't do much for it, and I'll try to start watchtower quest eventually. Lastly, I have to obtain these items. Full mystic from the wizard's guild, the sinister key from Salarin the Twisted at the end of the agility dungeon, and the long bone from ogres. I won't be going for the curve bone, that's too much of a meme drop for me. I'll also most likely complete all other monsters drop tables along the way. So lots of tasks to get started on. Oh, and there's one more thing that makes this a cool choice for a starting chunk. 
One little known feature of Yanil is the portals at the top of the wizard skill. They provide one-way transportation to three other magical towers. The wizard's tower near Draenor, the dark wizard's tower near Falador, and the sorcerer's tower near Seer's village. I'll be including these as rollable chunks, but only once I have the reliable ability to return to Yanil. One of my goals with this series will be to put out videos more consistently, so I won't necessarily be finishing off a massive grind with each episode. Also, if you've seen my other series, Sir Lumbington, the Lumbridge to Remington locked Ultimate Iron Man, link in the description. I just wanted to let you know that I'll be going for a simpler, more straightforward editing style with less narrative and more grind. Alright, with my disclaimers out of the way, let's get into the video. I wanted to give this character a classic, old-school look, so I took inspiration from the Yanillian soldiers. A quick minigame teleport to Castle Wars keeps the music list clean, and after a brief and perfectly seamless journey, I'm here. So here we are in Yanil. Let's take a look around to start things off. Obviously I'm standing in front of the Wizard's Guild, which represents my biggest main goal for the account, 66 magic. One thing I know I'm gonna need on my way there is a lot of food, as basically everything I'll be doing in Yanil deals damage to me. Thankfully our first stop should help out with that. We'll walk past the men on the way there. These guys are going to be the backbone for a lot of my training in this chunk. Ooh, free jug of water. My first item on the account. This is Frenita's cookery shop. It's uh, kind of weird, but it does sell some basic essentials like potatoes and pots of flour for making bread. This is where my 58 cooking chunk task comes from. Speaking of chunk tasks, let's just complete one immediately. By far the easiest task is the diary requirement to browse the hunter store here. So there we go, that is a chunk task done. In here is also the guy who sells a hunter's crossbow, which is something I'll need 50 range to wield, and that's another chunk task. These soldiers over here will be the target of a lot of combat training down the line, I'm sure. And look, we match. Of course, I also had to make a friend. First day on the account and we're already becoming a blossoming social butterfly. Here we've got Colonel Raddick. He's kind of Who weird. goes there? Friend or foe? Oh, I, I guess I better think about my answer. Ah, alright. Guess I picked right. Alright, I think it's time to get in my first fight. This cow looks like he's doing Nightmare Zone right now, but I'll still go beat him up anyway. There we go, easy win, and we get some meat for our troubles. Okay, this cow is way stronger. Let's switch over to cooking. There we go, level 2 cooking. I think it's time we enact Operation Steal from the... Poor... Buy from the store? That's how the saying goes, right? So basically we're going to need a lot of money to buy cooking supplies to train up cooking. My first goal will be 7 cooking, at which point I can cook baked potatoes. Potatoes only cost 1 coin, so it'll be a very easy way to sustain my HP. There's 2 thieving, 3 thieving, and we've already got 72 coins to start training with. This feels like so much when you have literally nothing. Let's grab some pots of flour and uh, let's get this bread as they say. I'm so hyped to just be cooking bread right now. Oh shit, level 4 cooking. This is going so comically well. Alright, we can use this to do a whole bunch more thieving. We've got level 4, 5, 6, level 7, 8, 9 thieving. That reminds me, I actually wanted to pick up a rake to start on one of my other goals. 28 farming. I'll need to rake up to that level to be able to plant a wild blood seed that I can get from the ogres. Holy shit, oh my god, the first random event on this account is a genie, oh my god, that is so good, that's gotta be good luck. We need these so bad. I'm actually gonna hang on to this lamp for a sec while I do some calculations as I may not use it immediately. Don't mind me, I'm just kicking an imp out of existence for level 2 strength. And there we go, the money from thieving pays off, and there's 7 cooking, we can now cook baked potatoes. At 1 coin a pop, these are amazing for both cooking XP and healing. I had to look it up because, come on, who actually knows how much baked potatoes heal for, but it's 4 HP each. Also, they look like this when you burn them. Alright, we've got plenty of food to keep thieving, which is what I thought until I made an incredible discovery. You know, I haven't even been in this room yet. What's in here? We've got some barrels. Do they have anything in them? It's got ale in it. Oh, really? Well, I, wait, really? Oh my god, wait. 
this is insane. Hold on. Let's get one cheap beer. Is it just me? Or can I fill this beer up on this barrel? Oh my god. What the hell? I can't believe I discovered the thieving hack the second I walked in this room. That's insane. Looks like I'm gonna have to become a, uh, alcoholic burglar? Alright, with that in mind, I guess I don't really need the food I just made. Let's set a thieving goal of 1k to get some solid starter cash. Check out my insane beer drinking, thieving, tick perfect, efficiency, high level strat, max GP per hour, high level 12 thiefin, 13 thiefin, 14 thieving. You know, I realized I hadn't gone up the ladder and explored up here. There's this guy who uh, won't give me his cup of tea, and that's about it. Yo, not gonna lie, I have never noticed this pond before in my entire life. Since when does this even exist? I decided to stock up on some more beers to make restocking easier while pickpocketing. I even got two red beers. Ooh. This is, uh, better, I guess? And with this coin pouch, we get 1,000 pieces of gold directly from the pockets of unsuspecting Yanillion citizens. I say it's high time we use this to make a small dent in the 58 cooking goal. I started off just buying all the pots of flour and the potatoes and grabbed a few levels that way. This is the camera angle right here, boys. Wait, wait why is there blood on the ground? What is wrong with this place? Eventually I realized that the potatoes represent so much more value, so I bought a lot of them. We are using this potato here, and there we go. A clean 600 potatoes that we are going to cook up. Now I thought I was being really smart by noting them. I thought that there was a range in this building, but there's actually a range in this building. So I'm actually just stupid, but that's okay. This could theoretically get us quite a few cooking levels though, which would be really cool. There's 14, 15, there's 16 cooking, there's 17 cooking already, 18, 19, there's 20 cooking. We can now cook meat pies, that's actually pretty relevant. Meat pies I can in fact make here with uh, the meat from the cows, which is pretty sweet. And to celebrate our new meat pie ability, the sandwich lady brings us a meat pie. There we go. 21, 22, 23 cooking, 24. Hey, there's 25 cooking. We can now create stews. Stews are actually pretty good. I can make those in this area also, and I think they might be amongst the best cooking XP per GP because it really only takes a potato and a bowl, which both cost one coin. So that seems like a really good option for me down the line, and they heal a lot. All right, that grind ended us with 450 baked potatoes, which will be perfect to use as food as we start training combats here. My first milestone will be achieving the man drop table best in slot, a bronze med helm and an iron dagger. And there's some bronze bolts. Uh, we're gonna get a lot of these and there's definitely no way I'm gonna be able to fire them in this chunk. Hey, and there's my first rune drop, some earth runes. Nice, we are obviously going to be stocking up on a lot of runes as we have a lot of magic training to be doing in the future. There's 10 strength. I think we'll switch to defense now. Also, I've been raking in the background and there's three farming already. Can we get any fun off the imp? A hammer. Okay, that's actually that's actually really useful. We will be using that hammer for sure. We'll be putting that hammer to work. All right, it didn't take too long. We got our first beginner clue and there are no beginner clues that I am even capable of doing in this area. None of them are in Yanil. So I guess I'll just put this in the bank for now. And there we go, there's the 10 defense. We can now wear black armor, which is not going to happen anytime soon, but you never know. Hey, there we go. By far the most important drop, mind runes. Nine at a time. It's not too bad. We're gonna need a lot of mind runes. There's five attack, we can wear steel. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's time. It is time for the transformation. Six prayer to christen this beautiful bronze med helm. Now that is the look. <laughs> Went just a little dry on that one. 103 kills for a bronze med helm. 
and there we go with that kill we've got 10 attack and so base tens there is a very interesting drop an easy clue scroll let's take a look there is a chance that this is a doable step in Ganil. no dang it's close we'll just set this down nicely right here We've got a clue scroll on the ground. We're gonna check this out here. Yanil step, perhaps? Nope. You know, I was just thinking that we must be close to the iron dagger drop rate, and we are. But it's also the cabbage drop rate. 15 strength. We are getting strong today. We just found the first chaos runes on the account. We got another clue here. Is it a, one of the, I think, two Yanil steps? No, it is not. That's a shame. Yes! Yes! The Iron Dagger. Finally a melee upgrade. Wow. I feel so powerful right now, I gotta test this thing out. Oh yeah, I feel way more accurate and just overall this is a massive improvement to kicking men. <laughs> and there we go, with the Fire Rune we have completed the Man Drop Table. And there we are, 20 strength. That's feeling really good. I think we're going to take a break from the men for now and switch over to a different target. We're going to kill some cows to collect some meat. I want to make stews until we hit the next cooking milestone, which is 30, at which point we'll unlock another great training option. I am keeping the cowhide for now, because why not? And there's the big 10 prayer. Very nice. Got rock skin. Yeah, we're unlocking some prayers. Would you look at that? My current best in slot magic from an imp kill. That's actually kind of a look though. Kind of a vibe. I mean, the tramp. Nice, another strength level with the cows. And with that strength level, we just unlocked four as a new max hit. That's really, really nice. Oh shit, we've got, is it, if this is a maze, this is about to be, oh my God, a maze. Wait, this is, this is actually huge. If you follow a lot of chunk accounts, you probably know why the maze random is so good for me. But if not, you might be a little confused. The rewards from solving the maze are fine, and the nature and death runes are even pretty decent. But I actually won't be completing the maze. I'll be opening this chest. It was discovered that if you open the chest and leave the dialogue box open, the maze timer pauses. After about a minute, the chest closes and you can open it again, continuously getting the rewards and only losing 1% of the maze timer each time. With all the elemental runes being part of the chest drop table, this is by far my best way of gathering runes, especially air runes which drop 15 at a time. The only issue? It takes almost two hours to get the most out of the chest, so I'll catch you in approximately uh, 97 minutes. Yes, air runes. This is so perfect. This is going to boost my ability to train mage and kind of get to some early levels so much more quickly. Two hours later. And here we go, the final chest opening. Can we make it air runes to end it off? It's empty. <laughs> That's funny. And we get ported out with a ton of stuff. Let's go check the bank and see what we got. So we had some earth and fire runes to start, but it looks like we got 16 drops of fire runes, which is way above rate, and a bunch of air runes too. It was a little low on earth and water runes, but that's okay as we don't really need those too bad just yet. Unfortunately, we have no way to use all the ammo that we got from this random event, so they'll just have to sit in the bank until we unlock a bow or a crossbow. I also got these potions, which aren't too bad. We can use these when we start to take on the soldiers down the line. There's actually a few other reasons why getting these air runes early is so good, but we'll talk about that next episode. For now, I want to finish up the cooking grind I started and get to level 30 for my next big unlock. 26 cooking. Or 27 cooking. 28 cooking. Stews just give so much XP. 29 cooking. <laughs> can make a mud pie. All right, if we get it here, this should work out. There we go, 30 cooking. We can now cook apple pies. Apple pies, yes. That is the big one for this account. And there we go. There's our first apple pie successfully cooked. Apple pies, I think, are going to be my fastest XP, and they're going to take us most of the way to 58 cooking. But that's going to happen next episode. Here's what we've completed off the chunk task list this episode. I know I didn't put a ton of content in it, but I've just been really excited to get the idea out there. Again, my goal with this series is to be able to release content more often. And let's go ahead and take a look at where the stats are at. 
I feel like this is a really strong start to the account and I'm super excited to take on the grinds ahead. If you're excited to follow along with this new chunk journey, please hit that subscribe button and drop a comment with your ideas for how I should approach the grinds in the future. Also, I would have released this episode sooner, but I wanted to write some more original music, so drop a like if you enjoyed the new soundtrack. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.